our uh, CEO, Matt Maddox, the president of uh, Encore Boston Harbor, Bob DeSalvio, and uh, the Honorable Mayor Carlo Di Maria. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you so much to all the members of the media for coming out today. We really appreciate the fact that you're here and spend so much quality time with our team. I'd also like to give a shout out to the team of professionals that uh, Michael just introduced. It has been such a pleasure to work with all of them to produce this wonderful resort. And before I um, introduce Matt, um, I'd like to say a couple thanks as well. And that, Matt, to you and the board of directors, thank you so much for all the support. Um, the team here could not have done it without the support. Uh, we know that the company has invested a tremendous amount of money and we can't wait to open, to get to the public in the doors so we can make the return on investment for our shareholders. So thank you for everything, Mr. Mayor. I know you're gonna speak in a minute, but again, I wanna say, Thank you so much. We know that the team here could not have done this without you. So again, I wanted to offer my thanks. And most importantly, I want to say that Encore Boston Harbor has received its operating certificate from the Massachusetts Gaming Commission, and we will open at 10 a.m. Sunday morning. And thank you. Chair Kathy Judd Stein is in the audience. Thank you for coming out today. We have Elaine Driscoll, who, as most of you know, uh, coordinates all communications and, and work with the media. Um, Chair, thank you so much. The team was terrific to work with during the preview days. Um, it was a uh, thorough exercise, and our team is ready, willing, and able to open the doors. Thank you for the confidence that you put in us. Um, we're gonna make you proud. And so with that, I have the pleasure of introducing our CEO, Mr. Matt Maddox. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. So we wouldn't be standing here today if it didn't start with the foresight of the lawmakers of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Understanding almost a decade ago when they passed this gaming bill, that this was not about gambling. This was about economic progress and urban renewal. This was about tourism, and this was about large-scale integrated resorts. And it's because of that vision that we're standing here today. We couldn't have accomplished these things without the strong partnership and relationship that we have with the Massachusetts Gaming Commission. And I want to thank them for everything that they've done to get us to this point and Watching all of the Massachusetts Gaming Commission agents work over the last week has really been incredible. They were here till after midnight last night working on our certification, and um, that partnership is strong, and we're proud to be, uh, we are proud to have them as uh, our lead partners here. Also, this would have never occurred had it not been for the vision of Mayor Car Carlo Di Maria in the city of Everett. When I actually came to Everett about seven years ago, it was in November of 2012, and saw this site for the first time, uh, first person from the company to come here, and met with the mayor, he laid out a vision for urban renewal and for an entertainment district right here where we're standing. And it was really extraordinary to sit in, his, in City Hall in Everett and hear the passion and all of the, you know, everything that he had dedicated to this and how he believed he could make this happen. And it was at that moment that our company thought this could be the perfect partner to bring to the state of Massachusetts a five-star integrated resort. As you walk around this place, I'm sure you'll see the craftsmanship is unbelievable. Our, I, I just have to thank Suffolk Construction and John Fish and his team the 7,400 construction workers that worked on this site. Um, in fact, we're really proud. Over 7% of all the construction workers that worked on this site were female, which is the largest percentage of any job of this size in the United States. So they, I've been associated with five large win openings uh, of these integrated resorts, multi-million square feet, 
And this by far, from a construction standpoint, was the smoothest and the quality was the best. So again, the, the trades, the craftsmen here in New England are second to none and our relationship with Suffolk has been terrific. Um, I'd ha I have to say that the thing that I'm most proud of, and the building is amazing, but the thing that I'm most proud of are the 5,000 plus employees that we've been able to hire. It's over $300 million of payroll that's coming to this community right now. It's a new day for a lot of people. It's a new start. And when you walk around, you're going to see a lot of smiling faces. We have a saying, if you walk through our back of house or if you look anywhere, luxury is not defined by buildings. It's defined by people, because only people make people happy. We believe that our number one asset are our people. Payroll's not an expense in this company. We're not a company that thinks like that. Our people are our asset. And I am so proud of the job that Bob DeSalvio, Brian Gilbrantz, and Jackie Crum have done leading this effort to employ the 5,000 plus people, hopefully going to 5,800 in the next few months. We're still hiring, if anybody has anyone uh, looking for a job. But um, it's been extraordinary, the work that they've done. And we are ready to open to the public this Sunday and what I think will be, or I know, is one of the most anticipated resort openings on the planet. I was in China a few weeks ago, everyone was talking about Massachusetts. We have 25 journalists coming from Japan in three days. This is not just a United States story, this is a global story. And we are here and we want to make the Commonwealth of Massachusetts proud. With that, I'm going to turn it over to the mayor and uh, let him talk about his vision for the city of Everett. Good afternoon. I said good afternoon. Good afternoon. Nice to see you all here today in the city of Everett. Even though we're at Encore Boston Harbor, we are still in the city of Everett. Um, Mr. Thomas, a remarkable job. I mean, truly amazing. This place is just, uh, this is wonderful. So hats off to you. Um, so I'm going to use this as a warm up for my uh, ribbon cutting ceremony. So I'm going to just practice a few things on you and see how if you like it or not. Matt is right. Um, back in 2008, I became mayor, born and raised in Everett. Um, I used to bike to Northeastern as a kid and always drive by the Monsanto Chemical. It was empty, it was barren since the night. You know, I went to school in 1991 to college, and it was empty prior to that. And fast forward, I become mayor, and um, trying to get some economic development going in my community. Met with the Secretary of Economic Development at the time, it was the Secretary of Hall, and I said that, you know, I really want to do something great for my city. You know, we're you know, we're just maintaining. We're not really growing. We're not doing really great stuff. I want to get access to the waterfront. You know, as a kid, I was always on the water, but not the right way. You know, trespassing. Right? We'd go down to the water as kids, and uh, have, have, we, were, we were cordoned off from the area. Right? We couldn't. All big industry was all over. They, they would not. No paths. No open to the sea or to the water. He goes, you know, you ever think about doing a, a master plan, an urban renewal plan? I said, uh, you know, not knowing anything about them because there's not really a book that tells you how to become a mayor. So I said, yeah, I, you know what, let me look into that. I remember going to Sasaki in Watertown, started the Lower Broadway Master Plan. From there, I created an urban renewal plan, did a water, uh, coast, worked with CZM and them to do a, a water plan. And as soon as we, you know, I worked with residents from the city of Everett for about 18 months. We met. You know, we had, we had meetings, it was a small group of people, and they wanted to see a hotel. They wanted to see a marina. They wanted to see active use in the waterfront. That report was released. I got a call from, um, uh, from the wind team, and the rest is history. You know, um, there were some other people who walked the site that wanted to maybe possibly look at this, and they said that I wasn't interested. Um, I was only, and when I heard the name uh, Wynn, the organization, I said, this is a company that 
I would love to do business with. Um, and to think about it, they spent 70, 80 million dollars to clean up a, I call it a Superfund site. I don't know if it's ever been deemed a Superfund site, but it was a disaster. It was polluted. It was leaching into the Boston Harbor. Uh, they built the Living Shoreline. They built the six acre you know, community park for the residents. Um, and these were, from day one, the conversations with Mr. Maddox, Mr. Wynn at the time, the team, um, they're always positive. With Bob, recent, the recent three, four years now, uh, Jackie and, the, and Chris and the whole team, and I don't want to stop missing people, but they bought into my vision of creating this. That's why they acquired you know, $100 million worth of parcels of land right next door. Um, they bought into the vision that, that we, we, fo we, we forecast and we showed. You know, this is a great area of opportunity for our residents. And they said, you know, Mayor, we want to be a partner. We want a true partnership. And that's what it is. It's actually a true partnership. Um, you know, it's, it's been wonderful. And we're looking at things like gold standard BRT in the city of Everett. We're looking at the pedestrian, pedestrian footbridge that they want to put up $25, $30 million to build. We're working with the Gaming Commission and the state, state, uh, the state to build the headhouse to connect our bike paths that we're working on now. From the, you can bike from Gloucester, uh, Nahant all the way into Everett. Um, and, and that's going to be a realization within, you know, probably the next year. Right now it terminates at West Street. I don't know if you know where that is, but that, it's going to be all connected. So they bought into the vision of the city of Everett. Uh, we, we relocated a park, and I know I'm all over the place, right? So we, relo we re relocated a park where we call Line Street Park. It's across the street from here. It's next to the um, Powell plant. They built that, that park. We never touched it as a city because we were afraid to. We knew it was possibly, you know, not the best part to be looking at, right? We knew it was very, uh, had some issues with it. And, uh, we, they built a beautiful park on the Marlin River. Uh, I don't even know how much money they spent, but it is a wonderful facility for the city of Everett. And I, you know, the re my residents couldn't be happier. 600, 700 of them are working here. I get, the, I get a chance when I come in to see them, they're beaming, they're so happy. They have a, they have a great job for a great company. Uh, that's, uh, that's amazing to get a five-star resort, but not only that, a company that really treats their employees with love and care, that actually really cares about people. You don't really find that in many industries. Uh, you, you find it with this organization, and that was one of the real reasons why I said I wanted to do business with them. Um, and I'm so happy to see that uh, some of our big, best business owners in Boston, from uh, the Verano Group and, and Frank, who have uh, Fratelli's and uh, Big Night Entertainment, uh, their product is wonderful, Ed Kane and Randy. Uh, great to have them in, in our community. Uh, they're great business people. I well, had a little meeting with them recently to welcome to the city of Everett. Uh, it's, just, it's just, you know, I can't say enough about the whole process. And, and, uh, Commissioner Stein, uh, it's been wonderful getting to know you and the entire Gaming Commission. It's just a great organization. They've been there with the City of Everett from the beginning. Um, we'll be tax. We'll, we'll be knocking on your door for more money, right? For that, uh, um, you know, been, we, they just uh, just just uh, spent. We're spending five hundred thousand dollars to design the headhouse that uh, will connect the pedestrian footbridge from here over to Assembly Road. That will give our residents true connectivity to the Orange Line. You know, in Everett, all we have is bus service. We had a train station at one time. We lost that. Uh, all we have is bus service. And um, you know, transportation is, is is huge on everyone's mind. How do we get people in and out of this facility? Uh, there are ways. Uh, one of those is called bus rapid transit. Did I talk about that? If I did, the gold standard BRT. If you if you see it in Mexico City, you see it in other countries there. You can do center lane buses that on, on, on street level boarding, heated air conditioned from, from Glendale Square, Everett. You can go right down to 99, down around the FedAF to North Station. I'm going to work my hardest to get that to get that in place. And I'm going to work with Mayor Walsh, who wants to build build up uh, Redley FedAF and build up the Charlestown neighborhoods. I'm going to work with the Gaming Commission. I'm going to work with you know, the Encore Group. Because uh, Encore wasn't always but one building. I was hoping the second building was Encore. Right? So, so we, I, we wanted to figure what that's going to be called, the palace? Or what? So I was always hoping that we'd be, but that's all right, we skipped a step. But, um, you know, that's, that's what we, we, this district is, is, has not, it wasn't created by the Encore team, it was created by the city of Everett. Uh, 
we looked at this whole area. You know, you, you see what's happening across the street, all the buildings coming down, the used car lots, the scrap yards. Uh, that's what we would define for many years as that, that gritty industrial city, right? That had tough guys that played football. We're still tough guys that play football, but we're no longer a gritty uh, city. We're, 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 we're a city that's on the move, uh, that wants to you know, get a little bit of that hotel business, get that little, um, just make it a vibrant district, you know, and that's what we're gonna do. And um, it's a pleasure for me to be here. I don't know how long I'm supposed to talk for, but uh, <laughs> probably using enough of my time. But I'm gonna turn it back over to, uh, to Matt. So um, we're here to answer questions, and uh, that, that's really what this is all about. Enough, you know, enough with the speeches, and we're we're really open to answering questions. Does anybody have any? So uh, he's asking about the 11 acres that uh, we purchased across the street from the hotel. I believe it's over 82 parcels uh, that we purchased over the last four years. So it's been quite a quite an effort. The idea is that we want to work with the city to create an entertainment district. It's not all going to be uh, our company win. I'm sure that we'll be jointly developing things as we have internally with, as you pointed out, the Big Night uh, group here and other people. So we want to work with lots of local developers, uh, uh, potentially other hoteliers, uh, convention centers, et cetera. But our idea, I believe along with the mayors, is to continue to redevelop this area so that it's known as the entertainment district in the Northeast. So do you see this as an anchor property? Yes, this is, this is what happens. You build, the, you build the anchor, and then all of a sudden, everybody looks around and goes, wow, look at the opportunity. So it took, it takes vision like the mayor had first, um, and then now we have accumulated uh, quite a bit of land and other people are too. And so we're really excited for the next few years, uh, in the next decade we'll hear it One follow up on that, um, will, will entertainment include concerts? Um, usually people come to casinos to hear famous singers, and so uh, your property don't, doesn't have that now. And so do you see in the future that you'll build a concert venue? It, there's a, there's a future for, we've, we've talked about lots of things with the city of Everett from uh, arenas to conference centers to hotels, but I'd like for Bob to just answer the specific question about hearing famous singers. Bob, what do you have on tap here in the next few months? Uh, sure, we're actually doing a, uh, a private event next weekend uh, where we have uh, invited guests coming in for dinner and a concert with Earth, Wind and Fire. Um, we have uh, the week after that, Paul Anka doing a private show for our, our VIP guests as well. We're gonna, we're gonna have our first uh, sporting event, uh, July 12th, uh, working with Ken Casey and Murphy's Boxing for a uh, championship boxing event right in our Picasso Ballroom on July 12th. And we're gonna continue to look at other opportunities um, using our current 37,000 square foot ballroom facility. Um, however, there's a second piece to this, and that we are so lucky to be in a city that has wonderful tourism assets right at our fingertips. Um, we already have arrangements with the Red Sox for a wonderful suite at Fenway. They have a tremendous concert series. We have a wonderful box at uh, the TD Garden, and besides the sporting events, they have some of the best concert lineups in the country. Um, we have a suite at Gillette Stadium. Um, they've also developed a concert series there, and then arrangements with the Wang Theater. And so there are so many great assets. One of the things that we really like about being in Eastern Massachusetts is that there's so many other things for our guests to do. We want them to go out and explore the region, enjoy the tourism assets. We think that will be the key to having them make more trips in the future. Yes? One of the best ways to get here. I, I, uh, I know that this is going to be a huge draw for people from New Hampshire, and I wasn't at um, your conference previously on transportation, but right now, you've got great plans for the future. Right now, what are the best ways to get here other than driving? Again, because Bob spent so much time in the mayor on their transportation uh, press conference on Wednesday. Go ahead. I'll, I'll you take, take that one. one. Thanks, man. Sure. Hey, great question. Thank you. Um, for example, you mentioned New Hampshire. Um, we're going to be uh, we're going to be opening on Sunday 
uh, Park and Ride, Exit 4, off of 93 in New Hampshire, where you'll be able to get right off the interstate, jump on a premium motor coach. It's a $7 ride. A great way to leave the car back in New Hampshire and ride in by motor coach. So we took that concept. We're going to also be doing that from the west off of 90 in Millbury and then to the to the south off of Route 3 in Rockland. And so there, there are three great options for motor coach. We have, a, we have water options available with a premium harbor shuttle. Um, we'll be running starting this Sunday uh, constantly from early morning at 7 o'clock till noon with a shuttle service in the harbor that will go between Encore Boston Harbor, the World Trade Center, and Long Wharf North. Uh, luxury, beautiful luxury uh, vessels that uh, were built by right under the Tobin Bridge. Thank you, Scott. Uh, Boston Boat Works, wonderful partner of ours. Uh, they built beautiful water, water vessels uh, for us, and we think the guests will enjoy that. The T is going to be a critical connection for us. Um, getting off at either the Wellington Station or Malden Center, uh, we're providing free shuttle service for our guests. And then quite honestly, if folks want to just get off at Sullivan Square, it's an easy 10 minute walk. Um, we did a lot of uh, transportation improvements on the roads, including um, uh, redoing Broadway up and down Everett, uh, rebuilding Sullivan Square, rebuilding Wellington, um, new traffic signals, time signals, uh, new pedestrian crossings, making sure that we respect um, uh, ADA accessibility. And so when you look at it across the board, it's on the water, it's buses, motor coaches, it's a neighborhood shuttle system that runs 24 hours a day and now connects us to the Silver Line over in Chelsea. We're really encouraging folks to try something different. Uh, leave the car at home, use mass transit. Um, we got to think differently. It's not all about pavement. Uh, we like the use of technology, we like the use of alternative transportation methods, and um, we're ready, willing, and able to continue to work on those programs. I know it's in the forefront of what the mayor talks about all the time, but um, we love transportation, as you could, as you've heard. Yes. And what's interesting, last night, in the, in, from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., we invited 7,200 of our closest friends, and they all came. And so this building had 7,200 people in it. They all loaded in within a two hour period last night. And, uh, and it was quite smooth. Hi, I have a question. Yes, in the back. Uh, yeah, just uh, are you prepared if uh, the legislature approves sports gambling? Um, where would it go in the casino? Would you have to develop additional space? And the second part, is it fair to say that Wind Resorts House supports sports betting in Massachusetts or at least has less concerns about it? Yes, we do support. Um, that and, and I know that the lawmakers are, are thinking about it and being very careful uh, in the way that that could be implemented. If it is, if the state of Massachusetts decides to do that, we have identified a place um, for it. We've actually, we have a design that we've worked out. Um, we would be ready to move forward uh, if that uh, uh, opportunity exists. Can you guys commit or at least comment a little bit on maybe funding the actual construction of a pedestrian bridge from the Simple Square? I know you've committed a lot to the design, but what's our what's our next step with that? Mayor, uh, sure. do you want to do that? Uh, sure, I, I will, um, I'll uh, go ahead and take that one. We have said all along that there's really three parts to the crossing. Um, it's important, one thing, when Matt and I talked about this early on, we, we didn't want a bridge to nowhere. And so, as you know, the DCR has been working in cooperation with the city of Somerville on redoing Draw 7 Park. It's really important that that connection be made, otherwise we would be afraid that folks would go over a bridge and land in an unfinished area. So we think the finishing of that Draw 7 Park with, by DCR is a critical component. We also feel that if somebody makes the effort to cross over the Mystic River, and go through Draw 7 Park, they have to have an easy connection to get up to the T. And that involves crossing over the railroad tracks. So we need vertical circulation, we need to get folks up on both stairs and an elevator, and then into an expansion of the North Head House at the Assembly T Station. And we've asked for others to participate that, uh, in that as well. But Matt's commitment early on was that if DCR works on the park, 
if the head house project is completed, our company would be willing to move forward on the bridge portion of the project. So it's a partnership. We are, we are expecting multiple stakeholders to participate because there will be so many beneficiaries to that kind of a project. But we will be there. But all we're asking is that it's a complete project. Is that fair, Matt? Yeah, that's exactly right. And it's really, I believe, part of the city's vision to make this uh, a full entertainment region where you can, you can go over to Somerville, you can go over to Assembly, um, and it's all interconnected, and you have access to the Orange Line. So I know it's really important, Mayor, to you as well. Right, I, I think Bob, uh, Bob answered that great. Um, as you know, the Northern Bike Strand, if you've seen the Northern Bike Strand, we have, it terminates in a small section of Everett. We have a, we're designing the rest of that section. It's behind Michael's Crafts under the uh, Sweetser Circle. Uh, that is at 80% design now. We'll hopefully be at construction probably by next spring. Um, that will connect to the, uh, the, the gateway connection. And um, they have committed, I could say, you've committed to building a pedestrian footbridge. And we are working with the uh, city of Somerville, the, the state, uh, talking with the gov to the governor, lieutenant governor, secretary. Um, I, think there's a, I think there's a strong commitment from the Gaming Commission that they would see this as a, po a positive uh, uh, piece of uh, transportation connectivity. So we feel very confident right now. We've been just awarded by the Gaming Commission $500,000 to design that head house. Thank you. Um, so I feel that they're very committed to the project. And I know that uh, the Encore Win organization is, is um, also um, feels very strongly because you can get, a, get off at Assembly Row and come right over to the site. You know, and Also, for people on Sunday, Wellington Station uh, is actually probably a quicker walk over to the site because uh, we'll be opening that connector, the DCR connector, um, the up portion, uh, to get over to the Sunday morning, so. Uh, could we get an estimate of the, I'm over here. Okay. Um, could we get an estimate of the first week's attendance? Uh, as a public company, we typically don't put out information um, until it's put out by the state. So we will continue just as we do in Macau. And by the way, our chairman of uh, Win Macau Limited, Alan Zeman, flew in from uh, Hong Kong to be with us here today. Uh, Bruce, do you have a question? I do. Um, I, I went back and listened to the pitch that Win made to the Gaming Commission back in 2014. And one of the points that they made was, we're gonna be focused just on this property. We don't have a Connecticut property to worry about, because obviously we're competing against the Connecticut you know. It seems like the transportation is sort of west and north. Are you going after the Connecticut market aggressively? What impact are you gonna have on the casinos there? Um, I, I do think that there will be an impact because as you know, the a lot of the Connecticut market is actually Massachusetts. And so, uh, you know, I think that this, clearly our facility, I believe, is, is superior and the location and the service, we believe, will be five-star. One thing that I don't want to be lost in this, though, is we are in the business of tourism. And so we believe that uh, our company will be able to attract significant international tourism because people, as Bob pointed out, are really interested to come to Boston. This is a great tourist destination, and we have great relationships and marketing offices around the world. Uh, we actually have some of our Far East players checking in next week because they have to come and check it out. And so we're, we're focused on the region for sure, but we're really focused on the planet. And I, I think that uh, we'll be able, because Boston is such a terrific tourist destination, to uh, be much more global. Hi. Uh so some of the uh, test night attendees mentioned how beautiful it was, but they also mentioned that there was food running out during test nights. So I was wondering what some of the takeaways were from test nights to make sure that this is, in fact, a flawless opening. Well, <laughs> there's, a, there's a long checklist. Um, when you build 3 million square feet and employ 5,000 plus people and try to open it all at once, if you think about it, no businesses do that. Most businesses start off and ramp up and grow as they grow, not these. You open and you go from zero to 100. So lot, we, we're learning lots of things from running out of glassware to no bar napkins to 
um, the ice machine didn't work, to you name it. But in terms of problems, there are the least amount of issues here of any opening I've ever been associated with. It's really just operational uh, tweaking. And these properties do ramp. I mean, I think it'll be 90 days probably until it's running like a machine. Uh, it'll be great from the beginning, but the wind service standard will be uh, you know, in about two to three months. Don't you agree, Bob? Joseph Mishner over here, you kind of touched on it in Connecticut, but you also have MGM um, up in Springfield. Do you think this is going to impact MGM at all, specifically maybe pulling some people that are in Central Mass? Um, Bob, do you want to take that? Um, the MGM property, great property, by the way, in Springfield, we visited many times. I feel like the property is much more of a regional destination. I know they draw heavily from the Hartford market and those areas surrounding it. And I do think that what Matt described earlier is we're looking for a much broader tourism play here. And so I think they're gonna to continue to do well there and I think they'll continue to stay very strong in their regional segment. We're actually looking for a little bit different type of market. And so I think we can peacefully coexist. You know, they're friendly competitors and they run a great operation. Thank you. We got to see a lot of the high end on the casino end, a lot of the higher end uh, gaming areas. What about the lower end? How much, um, like the penny slots and things like that, um, how much of that will be here? Um, secondly, is there a dress code? So there are, uh, you know, of the more than 3,000 slot machines, there are uh, lots and lots of penny slots. They're actually quite popular, and believe it or not, the average wage on a penny slot is well over a dollar because people like to bet credits, but um, there, there's lots of lots of opportunities. Uh, this is a, this casino will have something for everybody. Um, in terms of a dress code, we do not strictly enforce dress codes in any of our properties. Um, you know, I think that people come here will, will feel comfortable. And, uh, you know, it's, we clearly cater to um, the, you know, higher end segment, but everybody is invited. When you're in Las Vegas, or here, or in Macau, we usually receive between 15 to 25,000 people a day. Um, Wynn is open to everybody. Bob, do you have any thoughts on that? No, and, and I think um, Matt brings up a very good point. We're open, we're welcoming. Um, however, you do notice that in the property, there are some very fine dining restaurants. And I think, you know, we, we see this in all the resorts that we have. Normally, if somebody makes a reservation in a fine dining restaurant, they want to feel good about themselves and they dress appropriately. But if somebody just happens to be walking in off the harbor walk and they're out for a stroll, they're going to come in and they will be casual in shorts and in just the joint. So I think it really does work for everyone. And um, I think the guests actually figure it out based on their own itinerary. But good question, Seth. Thank you. Hi. Oh, how, how much of the revenue do you expect to come from the restaurants and the fine dining options uh, versus revenue from the slots and the casino floor? So we haven't given those specific percentages in a long time. Uh, back at, with the last time was really when we made an application to the Massachusetts Gaming Commission. Um, I would expect that this will be somewhere in the middle of what we experience in Las Vegas, which is majority non-gaming to uh, what we experience in the Macau, which is mainly gaming. So um, this will definitely be, I think, a very vibrant casino. And, uh, but we're looking forward to the non-gaming assets uh, doing quite well here. Yes, I just wanted to ask about the parking um, fees. I noticed it was gonna be 20 something dollars and it seems for some people, maybe they're elderly or on a limited um, income basis, I, I just think that seems steep. And I was just wondering if that's going to continue or if there are exceptions or certain times of the day that might be cheaper. Thank you, good question. Um, the parking right now is planned at $22 for the first six hours and $42 for the first 24 hours. What's important about that is by having a parking fee, you are encouraging people to at least think about it and maybe consider a mass transit um, uh, alternative. Matter of fact, we were encouraged 
to have a parking fee um, as part of our environmental filings through the NEPA or the Massachusetts Environmental Policy Act. So I think that um, it is important. It does make people um, think about it. However, we do have a frequency marketing program called Red Card. And for those customers, especially high frequency local customers, which we know there will be a lot of, um, they'll earn credits as they play table games, slots, or poker, and then you can use those credits to pay for the parking, and um, we'll give a discount for that. So I do think there's something for everyone. If you're a, a regular player, you can use your card and get a discount. If you're coming to dine, um, you know, when I think about our parking rates, and I think about my own visitation in around Boston, parking is pretty expensive in greater Boston. I think the, 40, the, the 2242 seemed like a, a reasonable approach for us to start, but clearly players will get a discount based on uh, rewarding them for their casino play. Thanks, good question. How long do you estimate it'll take to determine the project's success and whether or not it's worth pursuing that next phase entertainment district in Everett? So, you know, you learn as you go. We, uh, we feel very confident about the location, the partnership with the city, and uh, what this property will be able to generate in the Northeast. And then what you find out is what are, what are you missing? You don't know everything right away. And so we'll think about developers to partner with, who we can partner with with the city, and look at uh, different, uh, is it hotels, is it arenas, what, what is it that needs to go here, and really take our time and work with the right people and with the city to come up with a comprehensive master plan that will create uh, one of the best entertainment districts in the Northeast. Okay, one more question, Bruce, do you have another one? One more, uh, the way you're talking right now, the way you're talking right now, it's a decade and so on and so forth, doesn't sound like you'd have any discussions with anybody about selling this property as there were before. I just want to, can you definitively say your Encore Boston Harbor is not for sale. It's actually a, it's a key part of Wynn Resort strategy. Um, we believe that this is really one of the first integrated resorts in a major metropolitan area. And it's a calling card for other states and other jurisdictions globally to think about putting large scale integrated resorts that can create real urban renewal um, and economic progress, and which is why we have 25 journalists visiting us from Japan on the 25th. So this is really quite strategic for our company. Thanks everyone. Really Thank thanks you. Thanks for coming out. We hope to see you again.